act. And there's a lot of debate and everybody still has their ideological positions. Yeah. What we're trying to do is do a very practical, concrete bill so we can show exactly how it is that this works. You know, and, and that's that's going to be the model for the federal program once we get it operational here. Thank Go you. Ahead, Thank you. Um, we are at Dan oh. Chan and Sarah Nelson. We are at the end of our recorded session. We will continue with our unrecorded session. And you can use all those four letter words that you've been storing up and couldn't do on the radio. This has been the 71st Grassroots Emergency Election Protection Coalition Gathering. We featured Danny Sheehan and Sarah Nelson from the Romero Institute in California. And we've had an incredibly great uh, session here. If you missed the earlier parts, please go back to grassrootsep.org and uh, get the, uh, the all, all these are recorded. Uh, our engineers have been Mike Hirsch and Steve Caruso. My co-convener is Joel Stegall. Uh, we will be back again next week at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we're gonna invite Danny and Sarah to come back and talk about indigenous issues. If you're, if you're game in the pipeline fights, we'll talk about that. Uh, and maybe we can get Winona LaDuke to join us. Uh, but uh, this has been another fabulous session. Thank you to Tonka Bricka for uh, coordinating uh, the, the, the sessions. It's, uh, you're absolutely a, a beautiful part of the whole thing. We still have 65 people with us. We are going to sign off now on our recording. We'll see you all next week. And we will continue um, in our four-letter word permissible uh, kibitz section for the next 20 minutes. Thank you, I Mike Hurst. Thank you for running the recording. Uh, okay. Danny and Sarah, I want to invite, ask you if you can stay another 18 minutes to complete the conversation. Yeah, sure. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, uh, we Mayor, are, I, I see the recording button still uh, still flashing. I don't know. Uh, Mike, are we still recording here? I am locally. Oh, you are locally. Okay. And you don't mind the four letter words. So if people want to use them, uh, you, you can. Um, but uh, at any rate, uh, let's proceed now. Um, I, I did get a very interesting, I want to shift gears a little bit. John Seeley uh, has, who's on the, uh, has his hand up to talk, uh, uh, wants to talk a bit about what really happened in Virginia. Oh, and yeah. uh, I think we need to, to deal with that a bit. Uh, go ahead, John Seeley, if you're, um, you, you want to, you're not on camera, but you are on mic, so go ahead. Oh, I'll go on camera. Uh, eat, uh, <laughs> Great shot of your head. <laughs> you okay, there, go ahead. Oh, you see some of me. Uh, yeah. 538 reported, you know, county by county on the Virginia race. Now, I don't quibble with anything anybody said about McAuliffe's centrist uh lame posture nor you know the failures of his campaign but it what you know the data shows of course is that republican gains were very uneven and where they happen is in the highest income districts you know, you know which i take to mean people are reverting to their traditional patterns the lincoln project is no longer operative you know uh focusing on uh you know moderate Civil, civil minded Republicans. And what happened was, you know, in the counties like Loudoun County outside Washington, which is one of the one, per, you know, one of the 1% territories and in Chesterfield County where the richest people around Richmond live, there was like 8% swing to the Republicans or 9% swing. And, you know, this is because, you know, Democrats are now thinking that their base is the, the well-educated, smart people, whereas there was a slight shift toward the Democrats from 2020 in some of the poorer mining counties that are traditionally, well, that have a history of being, you know, uh, democratic or, lay, you know, work okay. people oriented. So we need just not to not depend on <laughs> liberal Republicans. If we're going to win elections, we have to... <laughs> go back to our roots right. and try and find well, some here's Democrats the, here's the to be argument. Here's the argument <laughs> that I want to make for Virginia. And Rebecca Landau, who's a great organizer, has pointed out that the Republicans in Virginia paid their canvassers. Um, and yeah, the Democrats huh? did not. So who's the party of the working class here? I mean, and also, yeah. I have not seen a single 
Um, one of these. I take a take on me. Somebody uh, not muted. Uh, some no, none of the pundits have pointed out that the Democrats have completely ignored the millennial and Zoomer uh, uh, generations. They are running a campaign for old people, and they are not dealing with the issues of the new majority in this country. Millennials and Zoomers are now a third of the country. If 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 only millennials and Zoomers have vote, had voted in 2016 and 2020, tr Trump would have lost by 60% and more than 400 electoral votes. The people under 30 in Texas, Florida, uh, all the right-wing states, except a few, voted overwhelmingly uh, blue. So the Democrats, the Democrats basically are a gerontocracy. They and seem to be- <laughs> Slogo, this was reinforced by what um, Andrea Miller and Ray McClendon in the last few days, Andrea has a whole breakout by precinct and where they did democracy center work, the turnout was very, very high, but it, it, they didn't cover enough counties. And they said that that came, campaign basically ignored young people and it ignored the Latino vote. Yeah, it's truly amazing. And um, so we know that we can win. And I had an idea for Andrea. We should get people to adopt a voting center. In other words, it should be a campaign, you know, like with Greenpeace used to have people adopt a whale or a seal. We should, not, we should get how much does it cost to fund a single voting center? And will you as a donor foot the bill to have a storefront and one employee? What could that cost? And can we, you know, get a little, a little patch and a little thing, a bumper sticker? Up. I adopted the Fairfax County Voting Center. Something I like, like it. That. It's I like a great it. idea. We could do that in California too. And okay, maybe, we got four more questions. Uh, we, Mary. Have to make, we have to make the voting center look like a, a fluffy seal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a polar bear. A polar bear, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, ahead. Mary, and then Steve, Mary. Yeah, um, this is a comment for um, Sarah, Danny, John, okay. and uh, Marina. Um, I must. I'm. I'm. I'm pushing this because it's so important to the climate change. Uh, everybody's going off of big oil. Good. Everybody's going off their nuclear. Good. But. What nobody's getting is that this woman at 18 years old in 1983 was a general contracting foreman. This girl at six years old was learning pastoral construction and did it from age six until 17. Hence why I was a foreman in 1983 when women were starving for equality. The reason why I'm saying all this, this is a quick background, is I've spent 40, uh, 50 51 years, okay, I'm 56, I spent 51 years answering the question, why is our homes not our shelter? And realized throughout my studies of building code reform, uh, climate change, all of it, that the number one, the number one, yes, all these okay. other things you mentioned are right up there, but the number one is building code reform. For 300 years, we've been rebuilding Tornado Alley, but the government knows that we're supposed to have implemented new building codes, but yet only government buildings meet the standards of the building codes that were supposed to be applied to the United States. That in okay. 1700, the United States recognized that square buildings were more hazardous, and the way that we built was more hazardous to our citizens, and they were okay. going to pass these laws to change it. In order for us to get rid of the climate change, we need to get rid of the cookie cutter mentality of build up, board up, tear down, rebuild. I have a thing called the Saddleback Foundation System, and I guarantee you a 7.9 earthquake, you would not lose your home. Okay? okay and nobody's good. willing to listen, but I've written new building codes that are the inherent constitutional building codes. 
and right, the let's... subcodes that are called the Natural the link, Disaster the link... Environmental History Code. Mary, we, we got, thank you, Mary. We got to move on. Put the link in the chat I so that everybody can get it. We appreciate. I, ju that. I just want to. I just want to say she's on to something, and yeah, everybody's yeah. dealt with building building codes, and every county of the country knows it. So going on, Steve. Steve Caruso, Steve. Uh, no, Steve Hoffman. Hoffman, Steve Hoffman. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I'll only take a minute. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, our organization has been uh, very concerned about the Freedom to Vote Act. And since the summer, they've added a couple of clauses which allow voting uh, machine vendors to continue their connection to the internet wireless or through modem all the way up until 2030. They've been kicking the can down the road since 2006. These clauses appeared since August. I don't know exactly how they got there. I just want to alert everyone's attention to uh, the fact that keeping voting systems connected to the internet is not such a good idea. And so um, we're, we're trying to add more language or take this language out of the Freedom to Vote Act uh, we've been speaking with a, a couple of the authors, and I just wanted to let everybody know that that is the work in progress that the voting machine vendors are trying to keep their access to the internet until 2030. Well, As we, most of you know, access to the internet will allow votes to be changed without anybody knowing anything right under the covers. We, and, we, uh, we are going to deal next week again in greater detail. Uh, Danny Seri or, and Seri are invited back. We want to deal with two things. We want to deal with the indigenous and the pipeline issues. And we also want to deal, especially with the John Wusak. Thank you. For, and, for thank you, Steve. Steve. Before um, I see Jeffrey and Justin, but you've been, had at least one shot. So I want to have Mike Fox up and then we'll go back and get you. Michael. Michael thank, you, thank you so much. Just a reminder, gang, normally this call breaks by 15 before the hour and oh. we've literally got this booked at seven o'clock so if we can wrap we it'd be, be absolutely yeah. beautiful we'll be off by seven absolutely we've got eight thank seven. you we'll go seven more minutes and we'll give him a minute of leeway here uh yeah i appreciate that okay uh, um uh, uh justin Anybody uh, go, else go ahead jeffrey still I'll, I'll let jeffrey go first Jeffrey, quickly, and then Justin. Sarah, and yeah, Sarah, yeah. Danny, I wanted, to, I wanted to show that I'm, I want, I want to even prove that I'm not to just, um, just want to, want to, you know, want to be, you know, like a okay. random person that, that's just said uh, I'll talk. In fact, I, in fact, I even came up with an idea for an inter, for an anti-nuclear day called International Radiation Awareness Day, and I'm thinking, thinking about making it on the day, on the day that uh, who, who she. Ochio, the day that the, the most radioactive man in history uh, died. Okay. I think I think it'd be best doing it as an honor. What do you What do you guys think? What do you guys What do you two think? Thank you, Jeffrey. I hey, Jeffrey, something to contemplate. Like and we'll talk Thank about it. <laughs> and Justin, an idea. Gonna, Justin, then we're going to sign off. Okay, say you're more. up, Justin. All right, so uh, try to wrap these things up. A couple of pieces that weren't mentioned in our discussion earlier uh, about the labor unions. Uh, one of the central pieces in California that is a uh, powerhouse is the uh, Building Trades Commission. And one of the things I found out from discussing with uh, the, that IBEW uh, is that a lot of these union members, they basically get their marching orders from the companies themselves, that they will tell the labor, uh, they will tell their union bosses and the uh, union bosses will tell the laborers, this is uh, what you need to be afraid of. And basically, that's why they're afraid of us. It's not because they don't want these sorts of things. In fact, I learned from their uh, uh, people who are one of their trainers that the students going through their schools love our ideas. They're all on board for climate change. So it's really a uh, trickle down from the companies that sell that is the problem here. Uh, so the next thing to address is emissions and conservation. Uh, Mary talked about building codes. And if we're able to change uh, such that we actually uh, have uh, more in harmony with nature building codes, we can reduce the number of power plants that we need, which will reduce emissions in addition to reduce the cost of any Green New Deal that we need. So I uh, just wanted to put those two things out there. Thank and also, you. it's California, California law now that all new homes are, are required to have solar features of some kind. Isn't that right, uh, Sarah and Danny? Uh, um, isn't that now in the, in the law in California? Uh, yes, there, there 
Um, I can't answer that as, as effectively as Ben Iker could, but uh, yes, there. I believe that's it true is, for new it construction. Is, well, it's supposed to be renewable. You know, so I don't know that it's supposed to be solar itself. Okay. Well, listen, um, uh, does anyone else uh, want to jump in? Danny and Sarah, you've been magnificent. I'll follow through on what was just mentioned there. Uh, just a piece of context from Europe. Uh, one of the big things that they're having a problem with right now is that a lot of their renewable uh, resources did end up being uh, things from forests like wood pellets and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're actually finding they're having respiratory issues from uh, some of these sorts of things because uh, wood doesn't always burn cleanly and things. So uh, solar really is the cleanest energy that we've got. And I think we need to push for a uh, hundred square or uh, hundred miles by hundred miles, 10,000 square miles across the country. Thank there you. Go. you Justin, what? Wendy Lieberman, one more. Thank you so much. Um, what an awesome meeting with wonderful speakers. Thank you guys so much for your work. Um, I just wanted to throw in, I'm not sure um, if you guys know about what's going on in Florida with the FL5 movement. We have about five um, ballot initiatives right now that are for the um, rights of nature. It's part of the rights of nature movement. Oh, it's oh great. Yeah, Chuck O'Neill. So that might be somebody to get in contact with or maybe send and him you your way, but just, you know, networking and getting the groups together because, you know, it's it's just beautiful and you know it's self-explanatory i don't have to say anymore <laughs> but well, yeah it's can, you, can you arrange to have a presentation on that for next week's uh, zoom call i can I try i can i can get somebody at least i'm sure i can figure out something good. how that long do you want the presentation that would be awesome thank you in 10 15 minutes will be fine. okay i'll figure it out and i'll be in touch with you for sure right, danny and Sarah, thank you. you again so much it's been really great to have you on you guys are magnificent if you can come next week uh, uh, or another time I do want to get deep into indigenous issues, and we do need to pursue what's happening with the John Lewis Act. Absolutely critical. It's dropped off the radar screen because of the infrastructure stuff, but we we we, we really need it. Tatanka, it's great to. Uh, I feel so rested having you, <laughs> Dr. Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so listen, everybody, we'll be hey, back next uh, week. Our our engineer would like to say a word. Steve, Steve, I didn't see your hand. Yeah, they uh, in Europe, they're looking at, I think it was Europe or Africa or somewhere, their companies are burning plastic now as a oh fuel God. source. Yeah, we, got, we so, went through that. You cannot okay. burn plastic. Furons, and, um, but everybody should see, and I'll end with this. There's a phenomenal movie everybody needs to see called Fantastic Fungi. It's about mushrooms. And they are, we are finding mushrooms now that will actually eat plastic. So let's look into that. Just one, one uh, quick sluggo, the guy who they feature in that, I met at uh, Social Venture Network yeah. when I was organizing with Ben and Jerry's. We may be able to get him on the show if I can oh, find I'd out. I'd love to have him on. Sam, it's his name. He's actually from Ohio. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, uh, what, what do you know about that? Cool. All right, everybody. Uh, this has been a phenomenal meeting as always. We still have 51 people with us. I, I hate to shut down a meeting with 51 people, but uh, we'll, we'll convene again next week. Uh, Mike Fox, it, it's all yours. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sligo. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny. Thank you Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. Stephen. Stephen, Stephen, this room has to shut down so I can open another one on this same account. All right, so goodbye. Please shut it. See Thank you. you. Uh, hey, and